Hello, interwebs. Welcome to this. 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 This dumpster fire. fire. This. 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 this natural terrible, disaster. Horrible. Ill illogical Shit. simulation. <laughs> Installment number eight, I think, of this series. And it's been a wild ride. I think we've finally hit the midpoint. My favorite was the first chapter when I oh, still had hope the for the series. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually coming up, if my memory serves me correctly, we're going to read today one of my favorite chapters, which is like the Council of Elrond chapter, where they kind of like figure out what they're actually trying to okay. achieve in life. Uh, if you don't know where we are, I'll link the playlist with all of the stuff. It's in this corner, I know now. That's a weird, okay, up here. that playlist, Grace, it's got, it's like missing one of them. It's what? like missing fanfiction four. It's got like fanfiction five twice or something. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, I'll and fix. that, it's got this video. I don't even know what it is, but it is not by you. It's like this completely random thing. Well, I'll go fix that. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, great. Well, I oh will put god. the fixed YouTube playlist in this little corner, cornery do up here. Okay. So, without further ado, which, by the way, when you say without further ado, you're creating more ado before you get to what you're actually saying. So you should just be like, get to it. You should just do it. Right. Stop. Let's do it. Dawdling. <laughs> Let's do it. Sure. All right. Chapter 9. Matters brought to the light. Do you know where we are? <laughs> do you know what happened last? Wait, I'm sorry. You said matters brought to the light, and the first thing I thought of is like when you have a black light. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, the hot elf came and rescued hot them. Hot elf, Grace's now, husband, and now came. they're now they're at their his house. Okay, cool. That escalated quickly. <laughs> Martian helped Lillian slide off the pony. When Lillian set her feet on the ground, she was surprised to find that there was no more snow on the ground. In fact, the ground was completely dry. Mucklet whispered some words in Elvish to the pony and pointed to a smaller building at the side of the house. The pony immediately trotted off to the building and disappeared into it. Lillian looked at Mucklet in astonishment. The elf laughed. Some elves are born with special powers, he said. I was born with the ability to talk to animals. Not true. That's not canonical. Don't take my word I for it. I feel like you're just thinking about like the ring powers, right? Because mm -hmm. he made... Okay, also I like how he like whispers something to... The horse, but like you don't say what it was because it was an elvish. you don't know Elvish. Yeah. <laughs> I relate to that. Uh, Lillian leaned on Martin slightly as she was still a little weak, and they followed the elf up to the house. Makalit threw open the door and called out in Elvish. Lillian stepped behind Elot and watched as two more elves strode into the room. One of them was a she elf, and the other a male elf. The she elf was dressed entirely in a flowing spring green gown embroidered with lavender flowers. She had eyes to match her gown with green with purple flecks, and her hair was strawberry blonde and done back in an array of many different braids. This is getting spicy. I know, but the other elf was the complete opposite. He was cloaked in velvety dark purple that was almost black with no decorations at all. His eyes were black, but full of wisdom, to which there seemed no end. His hair was raven black with streaks of brown. This elf first looked from Maklet to the hobbits not hiding behind Elot, finally resting on the wizard. The elf smiled and said something in Elvish. Elot replied, and the two embraced. Then the elf said in the common language, What are Elot the green and a handful of hobbits doing here in the winter woods? A handful. We are on a journey, Elot said. Moglet found the hobbits taking shelter. Dude. It is lucky Lillian is still alive. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you are. She, like, almost died, what, twice? She did die once. I think we're on time number three now. You really do forget that, like... You've hurt your character. Uh, which one is Lillian? Asked the she health, looking around inquisitively. Inquisitively. Mocklet tapped... Wow, that was a big word for 14-year-old Grace. I don't know. <laughs> Mocklet tapped Elot 
and whispered to him in Elvish, Elian, Elot's <laughs> Elot stepped aside and Lillian was revealed. Then the she-elf looked at Lillian with piercing eyes. Lillian felt as if she was being looked through, but she didn't move, keeping the gaze of the elf until she spoke. You have been through many things, my dear, the she-elf said sadly. She turned to Makla. Do you know who this is? She asked softly. I wish she was a deer. Aha, okay, so I think at this point, I should explain, I think this girl elf is supposed to be like Galadriel, and then the guy elf is supposed to be like, uh, 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 what's his face? Cute guy. Oh no, I've forgotten what, he's one of my favorite characters, Elrond. <laughs> Yikes, I forgot Elrond's name for a hot second. Meaning, I thought you were like met like Galadriel's husband. No, that's Celeborn. I, I know like his name. him. He's lit. I know. He's I'm very underrated. He has much more of a bigger role in the book. So. Let me talk about Celeborn for a little bit, okay? Because he is totally screwed over in the movies. They have to focus on Galadriel because Galadriel's more interesting as Kate Blanchett or whatever. That's fine. In the book, Celeborn is the one that they talk to the most and they plan with the most. Gladriel's kind of like just sitting in the background and she like has this moment and with she Frodo. Like looks and pretty. Sam. Sam is in Sam oh, is yeah. there in the book too. And Sam actually is the one that sees the scourging of the Shire, not Frodo. But they kind of just like because okay, because Tolkien sucks at writing women, okay? There's like yeah. three named women in the entirety of the Lord of the Rings. Maybe four if you want to count Baron Luthien, but it's fine. And like it, they it, so Celeborn is supposed to be like the king of the Lothlorien elves and he's like he is the the main guy like they plan with him and they talk to him about Gandalf and like their their plans or whatever. I understand in the movie that they had to like shift some things around kind of like because you got you you've got Kate Blanchett and she's like wonderful. This, she's a ring bearer so she's a little bit more important in the movies. But I'm just saying my boy Celeborn just got completely shoved to the side, and it makes me so just... We're such geeks. Hopefully in the Amazon Prime series, uh, there'll be like a, expl like a, like a, a Celeborn spin-off, because he's, kinda, he's cool. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> I'm talking about Middle Earth history. All right. What are, what are we doing? Teach a class. Well, uh, she was the Galadriel character. Sadly, right? Uh, you have been through many things, my dear, this she-elf said sadly. She turned to Makalet. Do you know who this is? <laughs> she asked softly. A hobbit, Makalet said confusedly, as if he didn't understand. The she-elf shook her head. This is the chosen one, she said, turning her gaze back onto Lillian. All of a sudden, Lillian felt her legs give way and she collapsed. Makalet knelt down to Lillian and picked her up. These hobbits need rest and food, he said. They have been through so much from what I have seen. He looked at Adela and Martin, who had dark circles under their eyes and Macon, whose hands and lips were chapped and raw. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. I feel like I've fallen into this, too, where it's kind of like you want that dramatic thing to happen, you know? You want the dramatic thing where the audience is like, Oh my gosh, and then like he collapses and you're like Um, and you really tried The male elf nodded give him a name. Oh, okay. We almost we do <laughs> Come with me. He said and motioned toward a hallway the hobbits followed him with Maklet, Carol, and Lillian I am Shalom Maklet's father the elf said as he walked down the hallway <laughs> S-H-A-L-O-O-M I hate Shalom. that name now Shalom. <laughs> Lillian noticed that he walked with a heavy limp. And I have to say that Alicia and I have not seen hobbits in over 600 years. So this is a nice reminder of what they are, he said. He stopped Dead. at the end of the hallway and opened a door. But we always have a room ready for guests. The room, you live in a winter forest. Uh, I think the, they're cannibals. The room looks like a hobbit paradise. Five hobbit-sized beds were on one side of the room, each one with a large fluffy pillow and a warm quilt. There was a fireplace with a warm glowing fire that sparkled for some strange reason. Two armchairs were set facing the fire, also hobbit-sized, with a side table between them. It also helps that Alicia and I have... It helps that Alicia has foresight and knows when visitors are coming, Shalom said with a small smile. While the hobbits okay. looked around the room, Makalet laid 
gently laid Lillian on one of the beds. Lillian tried to sit up, but Makalit gently pushed her back down. Oh, yeah, you're you, in love with him. You need to rest, he said, gently but sternly. Where is his future husband? Oh. I have had too much rest, Lillian protested, but Shalom interrupted. My son is right, he said. You need much more rest than you have had. Cryptic. Shalom put his hand over Lillian's eyes. For a moment, Lillian saw nothing but black, and then something that for the rest of her life she could not sprain, explain accurately. Something like fireworks bursting against a sunset, but also like a wildfire in a bed of many different flower colored flowers. But when Shalom removed his hand, she felt relaxed and at ease. Shalom smiled and said, You should feel well enough to bathe now. <laughs> We'll leave you to get comfortable. Grace's future father-in-law. Um, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> he bowed and went out of the room. <laughs> Mocklet followed, looking curiously at Lillian as he went. There are so many typos in this chapter, too. The door closed behind them. Macon went over on Lillian's bed and started checking her over. Oh, no, not you, too, Lillian groaned. Macon laughed. I'm just relieved that you're all right, he said putting one of Lillian's, one of Lillian's fingers on his wrist. Your skin is at a normal temperature now, he said, and your pulse is all right. The blueness is coming out of your lips and ears, and your sense of humor is still completely intact. Yay! Thank goodness. Oh, Lillian I actually like him. Smile. I know, I like Megan. Do you want to hear, do you want to hear my new, my theory about the elves? Mm -hmm. Sure. You ready? You ready? You're not gonna like this. They eat hobbits. Why do you always go to the darkest? Why else would they have this, like, perfectly set up, beautiful room? They're, like, healing her. They're, like, you know, fattening her up. They're going to eat the <laughs> No, I think my idea is, like, this house has, like, a different style guest room for each type of species in Middle Earth. I think that's the idea. So, like, they just led them to the hobbit room. They eat all the species. <laughs> They're well, not racist. Okay. And now if now is the time we come to a raging plot hole in that this is supposed to be a Middle Earth. At this point, all of the elves have left Middle Earth. I think the only ones that were that hung around for a little bit longer were Legolas and Arwen. Because Legolas uh, stayed with Gimli. For a bit, yeah. Yeah. And then Arwen Who did he leave Gimli? Or did he take no, Gimli? No, he took with Gimli him? with Aww. them. They're bromance. I love bromance. And Arwen stayed with uh, Aragorn until Aragorn died. And then she went to Lothlorien and she wandered around Lothlorien for a couple of hundred years. And then she died. So. That's nice. I know. That's exactly really what her dad said was going to happen. Ajella found a small bathroom at the other side of the room. Lillian bathed first, then Ajella, then Macon Margin. Why but not bathe all together? <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> when they were each finished with their beds, they found a fresh new outfit set up for them, made in the Hobbit with style. The boys and the girls with the girls, I don't know, Grace. <laughs> when they were each finished with their beds, they found a fresh new outfit set up for them, made in Hobbit style, with a touch of Elvish in them. Then Makalette poked his head outfit. into the room. <laughs> All done? Good. Your breakfast is ready. The Hobbits followed Makalette down, back down the hall and in, into a large room where Ila and Shalom were talking in Elvish like old friends. Shalom. <laughs> Weird okay, now I'm spelling it Alyssi. See, I spell it Alyssi, I spell it Alyssi, all the rest. So I guess it's Alyssi. Uh. Don't get distracted. <laughs> Sorry. This, this is a long chapter. It's three whole pages. <laughs> Who should I draw? Can I draw one of your characters? Sure, go for it. Who? Oh, uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Alyssi set was laying something on a large table that smelled good, but the table smelled good. <laughs> <laughs> but Lillian couldn't tell exactly what it was. Alyssa saw the hobbits and smiled. Sit, she commanded them, gesturing to four hobbit-sized chairs. Lillian sat down and relaxed, hoping whatever was for breakfast was good. She hadn't had anything for hours. Breakfast was a type of meat that Lillian was not familiar with, but tasted amazing. It was served with plain bread and tea. Alyssa let the hobbits eat for a few minutes before she said, I want to hear the entire story, so nothing left out. So Lillian started talking, starting with the strange morning a week ago, up to when she was stabbed. And Angela took over with Macon and Margin filling in anything she forgot. The meal was ended by the time the story was over, with Lillian feeling full but awkward now that she had heard the story in full. Mocklet looked shocked. 
it's like a tale told by old, like something I've heard before, he said, running a hand through his hair. This was well. now when that Lillian had a good look at him. Makalette's hair was bright orange with brownish highlights, wavy with a few curls here and there, looking very outlandish. His skin was like porcelain, pale and flawless. His eyes were a deep purple, full of laughter and love. He seemed to be so untrustworthy, cunning, and kind. Lillian couldn't help but like him. It was in his nature. Abruptly, Lillian felt someone tapping on her shoulder. It was Agella. Lillian, she said impatiently, did you hear what Alyssa said? Lillian shook her head and blushed. No, sorry, she said. Alyssa smiled. I asked if you felt all right, she asked kindly. Lillian nodded, confused. Nothing is wrong with me, I swear, she said. Because from what I've... Because from what I've heard, you should not have survived any of what you've been through, Alyssa said, her face not changing. Lillian felt uncomfortable. I assure you, I'm completely fine, she repeated, holding up her hands. As she did so, she became lightheaded and fell out of her chair. <laughs> Shalom got out of his chair and knelt next to Lillian and ran a hand down her arm. Lillian lifted her head slightly and saw where her veins were. There was a dark liquid, something that was definitely unnatural. Shalom took a dark, sharp intake of breath. I haven't seen something like this since, he whispered, breathing heavily. Then he shook off his shock. Ooh, say that five times fast. Shook off a shock, 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 shook off a shock. Can you stand up? He asked Lillian. Lillian kind of nodded like and did beard, so, but carefully. he doesn't have a beard. You don't want to look at it. No, it's a surprise. Uh, Shalom's face was serious as he took Lillian's hand and led her down yet another hall into a dark room lit with a single candle. <laughs> the murder room. <laughs> Lillian watched as Shalom lit a fire in the grate in the other side of the room and put a pot of something over it. Instantly, the room was lighter and Lillian saw its contents. It was a doctor's room, much like the one Macon had in his hole, but larger and more advanced. <laughs> should have said Hobbit Hall. The way you just, it's just use one the word, word. Hole. It's one more word. Why can't I have word just said hole. Hobbit Hole? Oh my god. Uh, there were more shelves of tools that Lillian could not name, many of which looked dangerous. Shalom was busy busy himself with choosing random instruments from Lillian's point of view and laying them on a table next to a large white bed. Lillian felt thoroughly confused and, and a still light-headed, <laughs> two feelings that did not go well together. She was about to pass out when she felt a firm hand on her shoulder. Looking up, Lillian saw Mechlet smiling down on her. Don't worry, he said kindly. My father is a doctor. He would not harm you unless you were an orc. <sighs> but an orc she may soon become, Shalom said, picking up Lillian as if she was a child and laying her down gently on the bed. What? Lay down, he said, and Lillian slowly did. Shalom ran, ran his fingers gently over Lillian's chest, stopping when he reached her wound. He rested his fingers on the wound for a few seconds, and suddenly he ripped over their toes in Lillian's chest. Wait, what? Wait, what? You're going to have to repeat that. I could not hear what you said. You're laughing too hard. Crazy. What happened? Shalom ran his fingers gently across Lillian's chest. Stopping when he reached her wound. He rested his fingers on the wound for a few seconds. Then he suddenly ripped open Lillian's dress, making everyone in the room jump. I take it back! I take it back! I take it back! They're assaulting her! Grace! much too short. Oh dear it's god. Totally Lillian closed her eyes and gripped the edges of the bed tightly. This is turning into Fifty Shades of Crap. <laughs> Shalom Grace! <laughs> PG. PG. The, Shalom put a leaf of an herb and crushed it and crushed it in a, it in a bowl with a small hook. Then he ran the hook across Lillian's wood, breaking all of the stitches. Ha! Ah. Lillian breathed in sharply, but then relaxed considerably as a wonderful smell filled the room. In fact, the tension in the room went down as the smell filled everyone's noses. Shalom smiled a little as he took the pot off the fire 
and poured the water from it into a small bowl. King's foil, he said simply, as if it explained everything. I hate everything that is happening. M Megan looked, not annoyed, knowingly, but the rest of the hobbits still looked confused. It's a type of herb, Megan explained. Oh, Shalom yes. took a cloth and dipped it into the bowl. He pulled it out carefully, squeezing some of the extra water out of it. Then he started to clean Will Lillian's wound, <laughs> gently wiping away all of the extra blood. Lillian barely felt anything. She was slipping in and out of dreams and reality. Suddenly, Shalom spoke, snapping Lillian to attention. I caught this just in time, he said. He took a deep breath. Lillian, it is a miracle that you are alive. I see that you take... That's an understatement. <laughs> Seriously. I see that you take after your ancestors very much. Well, we've been like a full chapter without talking about our ancestors. Oh, yeah, I got to um, go back to that now. Lillian was about to say, how did you know that? But Shalom stopped her. Alyssa told me, he said, putting up his hand. He pulled a needle and some silver thread out of a drawer. You are open to anything now. You could even be taken over by him. Lillian tried to ask who him was, but Shalom kept so, talking. But this is also good in a way. I know you have Sting, which is a good elvish blade. But now... Whenever there is a blade like the one you were stabbed with nearby, you will feel it in your wound. Hey, that's something that's actually canonical. Uh, for the most part. Uh, Shalom threaded the needle and started to stitch up Lillian's wound. Lillian felt the... No, Lillian bit the edge of her lip but didn't cry out. <laughs> there was a silence in the room as Shalom finished stitching and pulled out a small glass vial filled with clear with liquid. He poured two drops into Lillian's womb, stopped up the bottle, wrapped it, wrapped a gray cloth, and handed it to Macon. Use two drops of this on Lillian every day until it runs out, he said sternly, and whatever you do, don't lose it. Macon, I guess they're probably going to lose it, Macon nodded and slipped it into his pocket. Shalom gestured for everyone to leave the room. Once it was just Lillian and... <laughs> Once it was just Lillian and Shalom, Shalom gently pulled off Lillian's dress and began to wrap clean white cloths around her chest. <laughs> I trust you will help your companion remember to treat you, he said, nodding the cloth. I'll try, Lillian said. There was silence for a bit while Lillian put her dress back on and pulled a blanket around her to hide the rip, and Shalom put away some of his tools. Then she asked a question that she had had on the back of her mind. Will I really become an orc, Lillian said quietly. Shalom closed the drawer with a thump and stared into the fire for what seemed like a long time. Lillian was about to ask the question again when Shalom answered, It depends, he said. It depends on how much you love your friends and you want to keep them safe. I can feel your strength. A normal hobbit would be as dead as a doornail by now. But I suppose it is normal being a Baggins. <laughs> Shalom looked at Lillian for the longest time. Then he said softly, I'm glad these matters were brought to the light. Then he helped Lillian off the bed. There's a chapter name. Led her gently out of the room and back into the dining room. I hated everything about that. Ugh. There was some decent writing in there. Just not when he took her into the, um. That was the, I, uh, that's so scandalous. Yeah, that, that so has some issues. Scandalous. I would do that differently now that I am older and wiser. Do you want to see what I drew? Sure. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Go see that. <laughs> Don't read the words. <laughs> and see if it'll show up. Come on. Come on. Show up. Focus on my beautiful. There it is. Guess who that is? Guess. It's it's not what. Yeah, it's I, your future husband. Now read the read the words. Elvish. He's just speaking. So my you know. dad's a doctor. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Let me carry you to bed. <laughs> I'll climb in your giant hole, <laughs> girl. I hate you. The drawing's really good, though. <laughs> the drawing's really good. I'm impressed. He's you cute. Mean, I love like him. describing him a little slither came up with his arms are not well, the right leg and I didn't even bother with legs if you enjoy this absolute garbage as much as we do what a hang up uh, tune in next time where the I chapter give a sneak peek wait I'm gonna give this no sneak peek. hey um, the sneak peek is oh, Lucy was wait that's wrong um <laughs> I'm glad he did, Alyssa. <laughs> Give me this. 
Ooh, we introduced the antagonist to next chapter. That's exciting. So, if you want to know who the person behind this is, then uh, tune in next time. Grace, more we already have met him. No, we haven't. That's a lot. Okay, fine. Whatever. All right, bye. <laughs>